Padre, så bliver det i et spillet, det er sådan, det er Amen. Saint Isidore, uh, and his feast day was 25 October, that was Sunday. Uh, so he, um, we didn't get a chance to hear about him, uh, but we will now. Uh, also, I, I would like to make you all aware of another mistake, which was, let's see, yesterday, all those saints, blessed uh, Thaddeus McCarthy, um, St. Crispin's Day, uh, all those things I talked about yesterday, those were Sunday's feast too. That was 25 October, so I was wrong on those also. I probably did something else wrong too, but uh, we'll, we'll just stop there. So, uh, St. Isidore the Farmer, uh, as I mentioned, his feast day was uh, 25 October, that was last Sunday, and he was born in the 12th century to uh, simple peasants. He was a common laborer, but an extraordinary saint. Uh, he was named, actually, he, he was named after Isidore of Seville, and that was the great doctor of the church in the 7th century, a uh, scholar um, uh, called the last, or was it the, like the last ecclesiastical, um, or the, the last real scholar of the ancient age. Uh, so anyway, so St. Isidore the farmer uh, was rather ironic. So he didn't even know how to read. Isidore the farmer couldn't read, but he was named after this great scholar because it isn't truly uh, um, knowledge in this world that is important, but knowledge in the next. And so it was very appropriate indeed. So uh, he never was anything other than a peasant. Uh, his parents were, um, were very poor, he was very poor, and he was completely happy uh, for his whole life. As I mentioned, never had an education, uh, didn't know how to read, but he learned the most important thing from his parents, piety, uh, religion, right, sanctity. Uh, parents are responsible for the education of their children, and the spiritual education is by far the more important. That is what they gave him. Uh, so he ended up marrying a, a very holy woman. Um, her name is Santa Maria de la Cabeza. Um, she's also a saint, Saint Mary of um, uh, de la Cabeza. And they had only one child, uh, but he died very young. And so they remained childless after that and vowed continence. So they lived, uh, husband and wife, in separate quarters. He was uh, very generous and was always sharing his meals with the poor. And very often he brought them home with him uh, for dinner, such that his wife always had a pot of stew on hand because he was always bringing people home. And one time uh, he brought more than, m much more than usual and the pot ran out. And his wife told him it was empty, but he told her, check it again, and there was more food. So that was uh, the miracles that were occurring. Um, he even, I don't know, he had a thing, I guess, for feeding people and even uh, animals. He had this compassion towards even uh, the creatures of God. So he once saw it was a winter time. He was bringing a sack of grain to the mill to be ground into flour. And he sees these uh, pigeons scratching in the frozen ground looking for grain. So he feels, he feels bad for these pigeons, and he pours out half his grain from the sack. And people are ridiculing him, like, that's ridiculous, what are you doing? By the time he gets to the mill, all the grain is back in the sack. And then it, they grind it up, and he gets twice the flour out of it. So um, that, that is just showing how God was rewarding that piety. Now, where was that coming from, right? What was the source of that sanctity, these, these miracles? Another, another occasion has him uh, uh, bringing a spring of water out of the ground for a thirsty person, right? How was this happening? Uh, because he went to Mass every day. He went to Mass every single morning and he would spend hours in prayer. Then he would go to work in the fields. And this got him in trouble, actually, is that, um, it, you know, he had this little plot of land and he, he worked for the same um, landlord his, his whole life. He, he tilled those fields. And there were other fields around and other laborers. He would always come in later than they would. And so um, at one point he was accused to his employer that, hey, you know, your, your laborer is coming in hours after everybody else. You know, he, he, you're paying him, but he's, he's not giving you a full day's work. So the, the employer went to, to speak to St. Isidore and was like, okay, what is this? You're, you're defrauding me. That's not, very, that's not very Christian of you, right? Um, and so St. Isidore says, um, uh, what did he say here? Uh, he replied, although he was employed by this man, he also had another master, God to whom he also owed obedience. And if, uh, when harvest time came, his employer thought that he had suffered injury to his crops from St. Isidore's going to Mass first, then St. Isidore would, would pay it to him out of, his, out of his wages. So the employer was satisfied and left, but he was still suspicious that St. Isidore, like how late was he really coming, right? So he hides in his field. He's going to catch him, right, coming in late. So this one morning he does that. He's out there, and he waits a long time. And he sees other laborers coming in. Uh, St. Isidore's not coming. He's starting to get, you know, more and more irritated. And finally, he sees him coming, right, a long way off. 
and he's got his, his oxen loaded up and he's coming to plow the fields. And so this, this um, uh, landlord is going to come down there and he's going to give him a piece of his mind and really let, let him have it. And as he approaches, he sees there's, there's more than just St. Isidore. There's like these other guys next to him. And furthermore, he's like, it's not just St. Isidore's oxen. There's two teams of oxen on either side of him. And there's three men and they're plowing the field. And these oxen are like this brilliant white. He'd never seen it before. So he's just trying to process what he's seeing. He's amazed. He comes closer and they disappear. It's just St. Isidore. And so he goes right up to him and he says, what, what just happened? Who are those men next to you? St. Isidore shrugs his shoulders. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm the only one who's ever come out here. I've never had anybody help me. I've never even asked anybody for help except Almighty God. It's the only one whom I ask. And every day I ask him to help me to do um, uh, good work in the fields. So the landlord after that did, never, didn't say anything. He realized he had a saint working for him, that those were angels on either side of him uh, plowing the fields. And that is how St. Isidore was able to do more work by himself than the other laborers, even though he went to Mass and, uh, uh, and spent hours in prayer every morning. And so that, that story right there, that's, that's like the St. Isidore's most famous story. And that is one of the stories in the book that I always recommend to people called The Incredible Catholic Mass. If, if I haven't told you you should read that book, um, you haven't come to confession to me yet, probably. But um, read the book, right? Uh, it, it, it is a, a, the most amazing book on the Mass that, that I've ever read. Um, and it just it tells us all about the incredible blessings that come to us from daily attendance at Mass when, when we attend with, with faith and attention. And, and so that entry in the book, that, that's where this, this um, account of the miracle comes from. Uh, and if I could read further uh, in that, that one chapter where this is described, it says that um, uh, this story illustrates both the sanctity of St. Isidore and the benefit of attending daily Mass. Hearing Mass is a help, not a hindrance to our daily work. For God ordains that for the service we render Him, we should do our work more easily and succeed the better in it. The time we take from our daily vocations to spend in the service of God is not wasted. On the contrary, it is very well employed and earns for us both a temporal and an eternal reward. God himself has told us with his own divine lips, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his justice, and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, hear Mass in the morning, and you shall have an abundant blessing upon you uh, on all you do the whole day. And thus that book, The Incredible Catholic Mass. Uh, so this is something that St. Isidore knew from very well from experience, right, his whole life. He was very, uh, very uh, humble, uh, very patient, very, uh, what would you call it, uh, complacent, uh, just doing his daily thing, uh, day after day, serving God. And he never stopped thinking about God throughout the whole, the whole day, right? He practiced that. It's called um, practicing the presence of God is not getting uh, caught up or carried away or distracted in our work, but always being mindful, right, being mindful of why are we working, who put us here on this earth, and what's our true goal, what is our true home. So uh, throughout his whole life, he was known as a saint, and after his death, um, many people experienced miracles through his intercession. I think um, uh, in the years following, they, they recorded like 438 miracles occurring through, through, through praying to St. Isidore. And uh, 40 years, 40 years after his death and burial, there's a huge torrential rainstorm, and it washed through the cemetery where, where St. Isidore had been buried, and it washed up his body, and they found it incorrupt. So um, that was, uh, I guess, a, another sign of his sanctity, so he was canonized um, uh, not much later. It was actually, um, no, he was canonized, I take it back, he was canonized in 1600, 1612, along with four other saints at that time. He was canonized at the same time as uh, Teresa of Avila, John of the Cross, St. Philip Neri, and there was one other saint. But in Spain, they're known as the five. Like they call them the five saints, uh, th that, that's who they are, uh, the, the, um, those ones I just mentioned. Uh, so this is, um, again, just the other, an example of the, that great variety of saints, right? We've, we hear about bishops, we hear about um, um, uh, nuns, we hear about mystics, we hear about people who are levitating, we hear about these great missionaries, we hear about um, scholars and doctors, but we also hear about uh, the, the, these poor persons, N not educated, not brilliant, didn't have a good education, didn't have anything, but completely happy his whole life and completely a saint. And, and, and spreading that love of God, right? So that, that is the most important thing, right? It doesn't matter what we have, what, what, what um, means, what station in life, what abilities, what talents, what intelligence, what, what, whatever it is, all we need is the love of God. And, and that's easy because it's given to us. We don't have to produce it. 
right? God gives it to us. Uh, and it comes from us just simply a humbly accepting where we are, uh, taking what God has given me and giving it back to him, right? Whether it's one talent or ten, uh, it, it, it doesn't matter to God, right? And he just pours out his, his, his grace upon us. So that's something that anybody and everybody can do, uh, great or small, young or old. Uh, let us ask St. Isidore uh, for his intercession uh, to receive that grace. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.